Okay, so um, you have the overhook and you want to set up the Osoto. So you want to control the wrist anytime, especially pummeling is happening and going on. At some point, you're going to move like you jab. So as I do that, you don't want to be so heavy that I can pull you into me. It's almost like a, a jab in and out. Yes, that kind of reaction. You want that boom, boom. And so when you do that, when you feel me stiffen up and start to kind of lean back into you so that I don't fall backwards, that's when you pull me. And that, and then so you felt that and then boom. You go to the lap, you pull the elbow in, you step, you go here and over. Oh Sorry. <laughs> Legit? Yeah. This is what to do if I have better head position than you. The space between your elbow, I mean your ear and your shoulder is a critical point. It's almost as important as the space between your armpit and your hip. It's basically side control standing. It makes it very difficult for you to get any kind of pressure on me if I'm controlling this space. So sometimes you have that space controlled and uh, you want to, I'll show you another view of it. You want to be here in this position so that when uh, you have that, then you can't really do the Osoto or any kind of throw. What you want to do is you want to control the wrist and you want to do an overhand grip versus the, so this grip, you don't want to do this grip. You want to do this grip and you want to press it down like you're forcing them to, into their back pocket. That'll give the space. So Alan's going to do that from this side. He's going to control it. He's going to go in. And now because he has that, he has an underhook on backside. As he does the underhook, he's going to come in. And now he's got the basically a hip throw, uchimata. He's got all kinds of throws because he's in a good position. I Because I was leaning and pressing with my head forward, now he's in a position to where he can just turn it into a drop sail. So what he's going to do is he's going to drop to his knees and look away as he's dropping. And if he does it correctly, I'm going to end up flying. So. So one of the things that when you're trying to break down posture and hold people down, sometimes you, you're fighting someone who, or rolling or training with someone who's superior in technique or strength, or you can't hold them down, you get tired, and then they start to uh, regain their posture. And then so when you're trying to pull them down, then they start the standard uh, going to stand up. So for, when he goes to stand up, you see what Alan's doing? He's rocking to one side so that he can make his backside leg over here lighter so he can post his foot, go back down again. If you notice, as he does, he has to lean this way. This is the time when I act. I use his leg up to post, turn myself sideways. I block his knee and then I bring my knee no more than past his belly button. Now, a lot of people that try to do a scissor sweep they're trying to cross their legs, but that's really not efficient way to do it. I'm not trying to cross my legs. I'm actually pushing him away. And then I come up into the mount. The knee should rotate his hips away from me. It's kind of hard to see the action uh, go on the ground. So say I'm in here and I, I got control of his uh, biceps and he's trying to break my posture down and I'm fighting it off and then I get my posture. So when my posture is up, now I have to stand up. There are people who will uh, pass on their knees, uh, but ideally you want to stand up because you want to have gravity on your side and it makes it so much easier to uh, pass guard if you're already standing versus on your knees. I'm gonna grab his hands and I'm gonna pin his hands to his stomach and I'm gonna put a lot of weight on there. But because I'm doing this and Alan is a black belt, he knows what leg is gonna come up with. It makes no sense for me to bring this leg up because that's just giving him my leg. I have to, I'm committed to using my leg on this side. I can't just bring my leg straight up. I have to lean to make this side heavy so that this leg can pop up. There's gonna be a moment that I'm gonna create a shelf where Alan can use actually as a post to turn himself sideways here. Now, because he's doing that, he's on his side and I'm on one knee with all my weight on my knee. 
It doesn't take, it looks like a scissoring action, but it's really not. What he's doing is my hip, I have one hip pointing down and one hip pointing up. I'm already in the process of turning. And if I try to push into him, I can't because his knees are there and all he has to do is a slight push and it's a hit and sweep. It's an easier way to do a scissor sweep and you're catching them in the transition, which is always a good idea. It's, it's much easier to move a moving object than a uh, object that's static. Hope that helps.